In this video, I'll show you how to use Blowfin Wallet, including getting set up with the wallet and how to get crypto in and out of the app, plus all the other features. In some regions as well, you can actually apply for the Blowfin Wallet card. This is a MasterCard that you link with the app, and then you can load it with stable coins. Once the stable coins are loaded onto your card, you can spend those balances just like any other card transaction. I'll also leave links below to the Blowfin Exchange. Uh, you can get a deposit and trading bonus if you're a new user on that via that link below and timestamps below as well. So what we want to do is create the wallet. Now, if you have a wallet that you've previously set up somewhere else and you have the seed phrase or the recovery phrase, you can load that into the Blowfin wallet. So if you've got a trust wallet or a MetaMask or something that you're using and you don't want the different wallet, so you just want to keep that wallet, take the seed phrase, press import wallet down at the bottom and input your 12 word seed phrase and your existing wallet will show up. If you've already got a wallet, then I don't have to go through that with you. We'll press create new wallet though. So if you're just fresh to Blowfin wallet, press create new wallet. Now it's gonna blank out my screen for privacy, but what it's gonna show you here is your recovery phrase, which is a list of 12 words. This is basically like the master key or the master backup to your wallet. So if you delete the app or you lose your phone, then you can recover your same wallet on any other device via these 12 words. So this is really important to keep safe because if you lose your 12 words and access to the wallet, you can't get access to the wallet again. So this is really important. Write it down, keep it somewhere very safe. Also, if someone has these 12 words, then they can load your wallet on their device. So you can't show this to anyone else. This is why it's blanked out because it's obviously supposed to be very private. So make sure when setting up a wallet that you keep these 12 words safe and that if you lose your phone or anything like that, you can just use these 12 words to recover your wallet on any other device. Once you've created a new wallet or loaded your existing wallet in here, it's gonna let you into the app. So up at the top, you can see it says account one. I've got a balance in here because I actually loaded an existing wallet that I have into the app. So that it shows me the crypto that I have in my wallet already. And then down here, it says all networks. This is my wallet address. For the time being, the only networks that are supported within Blowfin Wallet are Ethereum-based networks. So Ethereum, Arbitrum, Optimism, Base, Polygon, BNB Chain, they all share the exact same network address, but they are different networks, and so balances will show differently within your wallet. You can see that down at the bottom here, I've got a balance of BNB coin, and you can see that the BNB logo is here. In the bottom right-hand side, there's a smaller logo, which is the BNB logo again. That shows me that BNB coin that I have is on the BNB chain. Now down below that, I've got USDT, so the USDT logo, and I've got a BNB logo beside it on the right-hand side. That shows me that I've got USDT on the BNB chain as well. Now, if I had USDT on a different network like Arbitrum, it would show as a separate balance in my wallet because even though that's the same asset, it's on different blockchains, and so I'd have to use them differently. Now, to round out the uh, overview section, if we scroll down, you can see that there are some popular dApps here. This is the same as the DAP browser. So if you just click through on popular DAPs, you can see a list of them here, like my DAPs and DeFi and exchanges. And you can even up at the top, just search by a DAP. So if you want to use something uh, like Uniswap or Polymarket or any other DAP that you can gain access to, you can get to it directly through here and then you can use it. Up in the top left as well, if you click the, uh, the menu up here, you can see some options. So there is an option for passkey down in the middle. If you press this, I think this is just biometrics to let you into the app and it's not actually a pass key. Usually with a pass key, you need some other service provider that keeps the other part of the key. So this may just be a face ID to log into the app like a security feature. So you may want to set that up if you want. You can also see your addresses and you can add different accounts into this wallet as well. So just near the top here where it says accounts, if you click that, you can see I've got one account, but if we go down to the bottom and press add account, we can also do that and it says account two. Now, each wallet that you have, you can have different accounts all linked to that same wallet. So these will be, as you can see, different addresses, but they are linked to the same seed phrase that I have in this wallet. So let's say that you want to use one as something that you connect to applications to use and the other, you just want to keep uh, balances separate there. You can do that, but these are the same wallet. And it's uh, important to know that, that they have the same seed phrase. So if one of your wallets encounters an issue, or the seed phrase gets hacked, then all of these accounts can also get hacked because they're actually linked to the same wallet. But they are different accounts if you want different addresses for different balances uh, for any reason. If you're new to using wallets, then you may need to receive some funds into your wallet. The best way still to do this if you've got fiat currency is to on-ramp your fiat through a centralized exchange. So you can use any centralized exchange, Coinbase, Binance, Blowfin, any of the others. Like I said, I'll leave some links below to the exchanges I use with deposit and trading bonuses. Uh, so what we can do is press receive 
And your wallet is the same across all of these networks, right? So these are the Ethereum networks. You have the same receiving address across all of these networks. So you have to be really sure about which network that you want the assets on if you're sending assets into this wallet. So because we only have one address, I'm just going to copy this address now. And then what we'll do is go over to our centralized exchange and we'll send some stable coins into our wallet. So I'll go over to Blowfin in this example. Um, you can use any exchange, like I said. If you've got a balance here of USDT or USDC, you can just withdraw that from your centralized exchange and put it into your wallet. So go to your assets, and this is the same for every other wallet. You'll have assets here. If you need to know how to use exchanges and how to on-ramp money, I'll leave videos for all of that down in the description. In your centralized exchange, you want to withdraw from your centralized exchange. You can see I've got a balance of USDT here, and it says where do you want to send it? Well, we need to send it into our wallet that we've just created or that we have in our Blowfin wallet. So the address up here is your Blowfin wallet address, which I've just copied, and the network. There are many supported networks for this address. So just make sure that you know which blockchain that you want to use. If the application that you want to use uses the Polygon network, then make sure your stables go onto that network. If the app that you use uses BNB Chain or Arbitrum, you have to put your assets onto those networks. And you can choose that here. So from Blowfin, it says, do you want to withdraw this money or this USDT over BNB Smart Chain or Polygon or AVAX or Solana? Uh, obviously, Solana isn't supported within Blowfin Wallet right now. It may be in the future. So choose whichever network that you want to use. I'll choose a BNB Smart Chain. And then it's going to uh, allow me to send the money out into my address here, which is my Blowfin Wallet address. This is the network right here, and you can withdraw any amount that you want. Whenever we use blockchains directly through a wallet, like Blowfin Wallet, we always have to pay for transaction fees. So if you want to send or swap or withdraw your crypto out of the wallet, you need to pay the blockchain fee. Now, each blockchain has its own specific coin that it uses to pay for this transaction fee that you're going to need in your wallet. So for BNB chain, uh, that's BNB coin. You can see I've got some BNB coin here, so I can pay for transaction fees. I've also got some USDT in my uh, wallet as well on the same chain. That means that I can swap that USDT or send it out of the wallet. Now, most of the other chains will use ETH for gas. So for example, Ethereum, Arbitrum, Optimism, Base, they all use ETH. So you'd have to go and buy some Ethereum from your centralized exchange and withdraw it over the network that you want to use. So if I've got some ETH on the Base network, I still can't use the Ethereum network because my ETH is on the base network and not on Ethereum. So I'd need to get ETH into my wallet on those chains to pay for transaction fees on each of those chains separately. Also in the top right hand corner, if I just click this icon, you'll see that on the Ethereum network, I don't have any wallet balances. On base, I don't have any wallet balances. You can see that here, there's nothing here, right? So if I want to use base, it's completely separate, even though it's the same wallet address, I would need to get some ETH into my base network firstly, so send it over the base network. That means that I can use that chain. I can then swap that ETH for something else in the wallet, like a stablecoin. I can use dApps on base and everything else. But I don't have any ETH on any of these chains, so I can't use these chains now, even though I've got a balance on the BNB chain. So just make sure whichever network that you're using, you have enough gas coin in that network that you can use it, and then you can have any other coins and use the dApps on that network as you wish. We can swap tokens within Blowfin Wallet as well, and we can also bridge them between some of the networks. So down at the bottom where it says trade, click that, and you have swap and bridge. Now swap is when you take one coin and swap it for another coin or token on the same network. And that means that you need balances on that uh, network. So you can use different networks here. For example, on the left-hand side where it says BNB, I'm just gonna click this. And the reason it has defaulted to this is because it's read my wallet balances and it knows that this is the only network that I have balances on. So I've got a balance of BNB and a balance of USDT and I can swap those easily on the chain because I've got some BNB coin to pay for the transaction fee. You can also use the value of BNB coin and you can swap most of that into another coin if you want, as long as you keep some aside for the transaction fee. Now, if you have assets on a different chain like Ethereum, different wallet balances, but you can use the Ethereum chain as well very easily. You just need gas uh, fees on there and all of the other networks, you can use them all in here. I'm using BNB chain because I've got some assets here. So down here it says, what do you want to do? Well, you've got a balance of BNB. Do you want to use that? So you can do that on the right hand side. Uh, you can do you know 50% or whatever. And it's just going to tell you the exchange rate. So let's do a swap of this amount, press done. So for 0 0.01 BNB right now, the exchange rate is around $8.50. Now I can swap into any other coin. So down at the bottom where it says USDT, I'll just click this drop down. And it says on this network, 
what asset do you want to swap it into? So I can use this BNB value and I can swap into any of these other coins on the network, right? So let's just say that I want some USDC. It's going to give me the exchange rate. It's the same as USDT, right? They're just two different stable coins. So what we can do down here is uh, slippage. Just click this. For large coins, you definitely don't want a ton of slippage. So just put it to 1%. Slippage is the difference between this price quote that you're getting given, which is $8.50 for 0.01 .01 BNB, and then the actual uh, price that you get when you trade on the blockchain. There may be a slight difference between that. And so slippage, what you're saying is, I'm prepared to get a 1% worse trade than this, but if it's 2% worse, then just cancel the trade and, and don't go through with it. You can see the route that it's taking. Don't worry about this. This is a decentralized exchange that's being used here behind the scenes. And it's just telling you that if you want to swap this, it's going to take BNB. It's going to put it into wrapped BNB. It's going to swap through a different coin. It doesn't matter. It's just giving you the best exchange rate that it can and using any decentralized exchange that it can to give you the best trade. You can see the swap rate down here. And if you want to swap, just press swap in the middle here. It's going to swap that one for the other one. And then you'll get the balance of the new token in your wallet. If you've got some crypto on one chain, but you actually want it on a different chain within your wallet, then you can use the bridge. So we're going to go over to the bridge here at the top. And a bridge is something that you can use to send crypto or value from one chain to another chain. So let's say that I've got uh, a stable coin on BNB Smart Chain like USDT, and I want to actually take that and I want to send it over to a different chain. So let's say I want to send it over to uh, Ethereum. So it says that I can do this. I can press an amount. And we're using a service. And we have to pay for that service because there's a, a service provider in the middle where they're going to take the crypto on BNB chain. They're going to you know, withdraw that from our, our BNB chain and they're going to deposit uh, the amount on the other chain for us. You can see there's a fee here as well. So we're spending $5.80 and we're going to get $5.69 on the other chain. So there's some gas fees and some uh, provider fees that we have to pay here to bridge these tokens. But that can be done pretty easily. What will happen after a short while is You'll see the USDT or any other token that you want to use get out of your wallet and it'll actually appear on the other chain. This is good if you've got some gas or one chain, right? So if you've got some Ethereum or in your uh, Ethereum network and you want to use the base chain, but you don't have any gas fees on there, then you can go over, you can press base like this, and you obviously want to send the gas fee, so ETH, like this. I've actually got a tiny balance on the base network, as you can see, but let's say you want to add you know, an amount of ETH from your ETH network, send it over to base. You'll pay a small fee here, but you can get that gas token over to the base network. Now, bridge fees tend to be slightly high. You may find that it would be cheaper to actually just send crypto out of your wallet back into your centralized exchange. And then from your centralized exchange, once the crypto has cleared in there, withdraw it again over a different network from your centralized exchange. You may find that that works out a little bit cheaper than actually paying the bridge fee. So you can try that if you need to. There's also an earn tab within Blowfin Wallet. For right now, it's very simple. It's just using Aave. Aave is the, by far and away, the largest lending and borrowing app in crypto. So if we go to earn down at the bottom, if you have some stable coins or actually mostly just USDC right now on, on Blowfin Wallet, what you can do is supply your USDC to the Aave market. So the Aave market is lending and borrowing. So some people who want to borrow dollars will pay uh, to borrow dollars. They'll pay an interest rate you can lend your dollars to them uh, on Aave. Aave is a DeFi app, it's very big, and you can use it directly through Blowfin Wallet. So what you would do if you do have USDC, and this for right now is on the base network, and this one here is on Arbitrum network. So you can see on base, the rate is 3.08% for lending USDC. On Arbitrum right now, it's 2.76%. You can use Aave directly yourself if you want. This just sets it up very easily for you, and you don't have to go through signing any transactions or using the app yourself. So if you want to lend out some USDC that you have, if it's on the base network, just click this and you can press purchase. And you can say, I want to deposit $100 into Aave. It will do all of the background stuff for you. Press approve and deposit. And then you'll have that $100 in Aave earning 3% or 3.08%. That's a yearly figure. So if you have it there for a year, you'll earn 3.08%. Aave has variable interest rates. So sometimes the interest rate may be higher or lower, and whatever it may be, at any given day, that's what you get. So some days you might be earning 5% APY, other days two and a half. So around about 3% right now. That's an easy way to use Aave. Like I said, you can use any application directly by going to the DAP browser as well. So rather than going to Earn and using Aave through the Earn feature, we can go back to Wallet, scroll down, 
and go to popular dApps here. On the right hand side, there's an arrow, so click that. You can see all of the popular dApps that they're curating for you. So you can just click those directly to use the apps or you can go up to the top here and then search for the URL. So let's go into Aave directly. So Aave.com, we'll search for that and it should let us into uh, the Aave website. On the top right hand corner, we actually want to use Aave for web. So we're using web browser here and you can see that it's already loading my wallet. So my wallet's already, already connected here. Uh, on the base market, you can see that I can uh, you know, loan out some Ethereum that I've got in here, 1.46%. You might look at other markets like Ethereum. So this is a different market. You can see the options here to loan out. Tether, USD coin, 3.5%, something like that. So you can use those markets as well if you want directly in the app. So if you want to know how to use Aave, uh, I'll leave a separate video guide on that below in the description. Glowfin Wallet also lets us apply for a debit card within the app. So the way this works is that we have to go over to the card section we have to apply for a debit card, which is a MasterCard, and we have to link it to our wallet. Now, the way that the card and the wallet are linked is that we're going to load stablecoin balances onto the card via the wallet. And as of right now, it uses the Arbitrum network. So in my balance right here, you can see that I've added $20 of ETH into the wallet. I just uh, sent from my centralized exchange into the wallet. So ETH on the Arbitrum network. You have to pay a tiny amount to kind of activate the card. And the card is linked to your wallet and then you can send stablecoin balances over to the card to put money on the card and then you can spend on the card just like you would normally just like any other mastercard so we're going to go to card in the bottom right and we're on the arbitrum network that's fine so i've got some eth on the arbitrum network as of right now in the future i'm sure they're going to support other networks that you can use to send stablecoin balances into the card this may not be available in every region but if it is and it's available for you, you can apply for the card. The card is run separately to the wallet. So you're going to have to KYC to get the card. That means you have to give ID documents, name, address, and the country that you live in, etc. just like any other card. But you can apply for the card, do your KYC, and if it's accepted, then you now have a debit card and it's linked to your wallet and then you can load it with stablecoin balances and that's your money on the card that you can spend. So let's press get started. And from here it says, uh, I want to apply for the card and a signature is required. So we're gonna press sign here. And we have to go through a whole KYC process as well. Order processing, that will be completed soon. Press confirm here. And then eventually what's gonna happen is it's gonna ask you to uh, KYC for the card. That's a completely separate process. That initial application may take a couple of minutes to go through. I've edited out the time here, but it was literally two minutes up at the top now. I have uh, a request to complete KYC. I can't use the card until I complete KYC. So we're gonna do that, we'll press complete KYC here. And it takes you over to the partner here, which is Fiat24. I believe they're based in Switzerland. Um, and so that's who you're using for the card. They're issuing the card for you. So what you can do is obviously go and press sign to continue. Then you'll be going through the KYC process. So get your passport out. You'll have to scan the, pass uh, the passport with the phone and you'll have to do a face scan as well to make sure that it's you and any other information that you need, like an email address, that's basically signing up for the card through this. So you can go through that, it's a step-by-step -step process. The other thing that you need to do in order to activate the card is to deposit, uh, I think 11 USDC into the card. So because we're using Arbitrum, you'll need to get at least 11 USDC into the Arbitrum network in your wallet in order to use that to deposit into the card initially to activate it. That $11 sits on the card, uh, but that's the initial fee that you have to pay once that's done, you can use the card, you can load it with other balances. You have the card information down here as well, which is the long card number and the uh, three digits on the back. And you can add this card immediately to Apple Pay and Google Pay as well. So you can easily pay through your phone or uh, through any websites that accept that as well. We can use this card in USD. You can see I've got a USD balance. So that means if you're spending in a different currency, there may be an FX fee involved as well. I think the fees um, come out to around about 2% on transactions. Uh, that may be different depending on which country that you're in and currency that you're paying in, but that's a ballpark figure of uh, the extra fees that you have to pay here. Uh, but you essentially have a MasterCard debit card that you can use anywhere and you can load it with stablecoin balances from your Blowfin wallet. I'll leave links to Blowfin Centralized Exchange and the other apps that I use. You can get some great deposit and trading bonuses on those in the description and all the other helpful videos that you may need, I'll link down there as well. I'm James, this is Money's EG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.